This is the Rolling with Tay podcast. I'm your host, Tasia, a.k.a. Tay, and this is episode four. And I have Arnov here, a.k.a. Sonic, in the skating streets. He is uh, the owner and operator of Kinetic Skate Shop, located in Queens, New York, a certified skate IA instructor, head staffer, and examiner, um, staffer at the Empire State Club, Empire Skate Club <laughs> and Wednesday Night Skate. He's a team member of the Empire Skate NYC. He's well versed in various styles of skating, um, more specifically, urban, speed, freestyle slalom, and ultra distance skating. Is there anything else I'm missing? <laughs> um, I've been dabbling a little bit of skate park uh, lately, but I'm, I'm still, maybe I'm not a pro there yet. But we'll get there. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, welcome to my podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. So we're about to get into it. When did you get bit by the skating bug? Oh, man, that was a long time ago. What are you looking at now? Um, I, <laughs> I started in 97. So this will be um, come in well into my 25th year of skating. Um, I started as a kid playing sidewalk hockey on the streets of Queens and so my buddies got skates. So I was like, oh, I got to get skates too. So then it just went from there. I was just like, oh, it's really fun being on skates, just even outside of playing hockey on the sidewalk. So I was like, oh, I can just skate around town. I just wore them every day in college. And I've just been living the life on skates and finding more ways to have fun on wheels. That's nice. That's dope. You know, I wish I would have skated throughout college. Uh, I stopped. I think I stopped <laughs> right around high school, you know, because skating when we, when I was younger, like there were neighborhood kids that skated. And then as we got a little older, skating wasn't the thing anymore. Oh, so, yeah. you know, I stopped, but I wish I would have kept going. But I'm getting back into it now. But that's yeah, cool it's okay. that you I'll, skated. I'll be, I'll be honest. You, you didn't miss too much. I mean, if you're <laughs> skating in those days, you're just kind of skating by yourself. You're kind of like a lone rat or whatever. Like, now's the time to really be on skates. The, the energy is really good. The community is really good. There's a lot of ways to enjoy it. And there's a lot of people you could skate with. So now's the time. Yeah. We're glad you're part of it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So then what made you want to take your skating to another level and get certified and start teaching people how to skate? Yeah, so in uh, 2014, I attended this camp called uh, Camp Skate IA. So that was run by an organization called the Skate Instructors Association. And I'd been skating for, what, 17 years at that point. And it was the first time I actually got skating lessons. And I was like, mm. oh, my God, look at all these ways I can improve. I thought I was good, but I was like, oh, now I can get really good. So it was exciting to just see my skills improve in those ways. And then uh, a few months later, the opportunity came up to like get the training to teach others through their uh, certification program. So I took it up thinking, oh, maybe I'll teach, maybe I won't. We'll see what happens. It would just be useful. But I had a really fun time with the program. And I've since been on board with uh, Skate IA in a lot of different ways. So I'm now training and certifying new instructors in uh, their level one program and in skate park. And I've been teaching here and there. It's really at all over the place. So I've taught in New York. I've taught all over the East Coast, Philly, DC, Boston. I've taught out in California. I've even taught out in Cuba, which is really cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So jumping back a little bit, did you think like skating could take you all these places? Like <laughs> you, you're just skating for this enjoyment. Now it's, it's transformed into you teaching and traveling all over yeah i mean i i never i never thought that was gonna happen but it's kind of fun you know you put on some wheels you don't know where it's gonna take you so at first i was like doing the urban rides with uh wednesday night skate and empire skate club and i'd go to all these places in new york i'd never seen before i'd never been to before which is really interesting because i've you know born and raised in new york i grew up here but to like see this whole act part of the city. And then I got to go to other cities and be led around on these group rides. So it's been really cool. Just seeing the world on skates is a little more uh, interesting and exciting uh, and a lot of fun for sure. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> so can you explain what urban skating is? Yeah, so urban skating, it's more a catch-all term for a lot of different kinds of skating. So some people call it like free ride skating or some people call it, you know, just... 
they're just out skating and it could mean um i consider a lot of things that qualify as urban skating. so it could just be like you're just skating around a neighborhood you might be skating in the city streets or on the sidewalks you might be you know you might just be commuting on skates mm -hmm. trying to get from point a to point b that's something i did a lot of at least back when we had places to commute to before the pandemic happened um and and then it could also be just skating with other people, like the group rides, including Wednesday night skate, right? So like we're on the streets, we're together. So it's kind of a, just an urban environment. You're skating and you're using the environment as a way to enjoy it, whether it's like city streets, or maybe you might be like, you know, skating down like a flight of stairs, or you might be like, you know, whipping around traffic, or you might just be like playing with some other like concrete features that we have around. So that's urban skating to me. All right. All right. Cool. So I guess I'm an urban skater. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So what is freestyle slalom? slalom? <laughs> and is there a difference between uh, freestyle and regular slalom skating? Yeah. So uh, at this point in time, if you say slalom skating, it generally refers to freestyle slalom. Gotcha. But there's a historical difference why this name came about. So Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, there was this form of skating called slalom, which looked kind of like ski slalom, where you're just going left, right, left, right. So the cones were kind of big. And we had this in Central Park. I wasn't around for those days, but I, I found some videos on YouTube, complete with uh, early 2000s techno music. Um, like, so there's a clip of Central Park, and they've got these like... Um, They've got these cones and they're bigger. They're about eight inches or a foot tall, kind of the stuff you'd use in like a soccer field. Mm -hmm. And they're spaced about five or six feet apart. And people are just going through them forwards. They're going backwards. They're holding chains. Like they're holding each other's hands and going through them. So it's a very, and they're going fast, like wicked fast. And in the videos, it's kind of funny. You hear people yelling, get out of the way. Because it's Central Park and it's really <laughs> packed in there. So that was kind of the way it was. You just head in one direction. It might be down a hill. And you're just like flying around these cones like as quickly as you can um, and trying not to crash or whatever. And then freestyle slalom, when originally I think it was called like European style slalom, came about where the cones were what's smaller and they're placed closer together. So like we're talking closer to 80 centimeters. So we're looking at what, two and a half feet as mm -hmm. opposed to like five or six feet. And then the moves became way more intricate and stylistic and more dance-like and artistic. So I think that's where the name really came about, the word freestyle slalom. You're kind of going back and forth on the cone. It's more expressive. It's more intricate. It's more stylistic. It's more complicated in a lot of ways. So that's that's where the difference is between the styles. Mm, okay. I definitely have seen some people in Central Park and Prospect Park slaloming. I, I guess that's what you call it. Yeah, we can call it slaloming. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we, we Thing. okay <laughs> and i look like oh that's pretty cool um and even i went skating with uh trev and oh, travel that's awesome yeah yep. and and he was doing it and i was just like oh okay that's cool yeah well he's got his ice skating background so he had a lot to work with and he's also yeah. another uh, skate ice certified instructor i actually certified him a couple of years ago really really great instructor and really great uh, person in the community he's really expanding the world in skating and also he's a lot of fun to watch on skates like man dude's got some great moves yeah yeah he's definitely cool shout out to him and he was also a guest on uh, season one so check that out people but yeah i've out and i've looked and i think i i've even looked up some youtube videos of people doing it and i'm just like oh that looks pretty cool but i did that that's where it you know, ended with me just looking up some videos and like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. So one, one of the things we're doing at Skate Eye is we're trying to put together some resources so people can actually like learn these. Like we mm. put together a little thing called the challenge program, which is like we put the moves in like an order by levels. So mm. people aren't like looking up a video and seeing something that's way too complicated, right? They're like starting with a move that's like easier. And then we're also trying to get like instructors out to like, if someone wants to learn, they'd be like, okay, here's some, some foundations so you can just get going and just, it's, it's really rewarding to learn the style of skating, especially if you have like someone guiding you through it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So speaking of another, I guess, style of skating, what made you want to become a speed skater? Well, fun. <laughs> and I was doing a lot of that. And, you know, this is all around the same time I picked up all these disciplines. It was around 20, 
15 that I was like, oh, let me, I became a certified instructor. I picked up slalom skating. I picked up speed skating, did a little bit of a uh, skate park stuff. So uh, speed skating, I figured I'd already been doing like the New York City uh, skating marathon, which is in a prospect mm-hmm. park every summer. So mm-hmm. I've been doing that on my roller hockey skates, which is what I was using at the time. And I was like, okay, well, I pretty much hit the limits of where I could go with that. So I was like, well, what if I pick up one of these skates with these giant wheels? And at the time, the giant wheels meant like 100 millimeters um, and four of them. So I'm, I've since moved on to even bigger wheels. But I was like, oh, it's actually fun to go fast. It's fun to be in a pack of skaters. And then you could go to these races in all other parts of the country. Like Minnesota's got this amazing race uh, that goes right next to the, the giant lake over there. Um, there's races in uh, Berlin on the same course as the running course. I've done a race in Paris and in the Swiss mountains. So it's really fun to just like go fast. Mm-hmm. And also when you get into speed skating, there are some events that are even, uh, we get further distances. So New York, uh, you could do, instead of a marathon, you could do a hundred kilometer version, which is 19 times around Prospect Park mm-hmm. instead of eight for the marathon. So it's like, Wow, that's that's a whole nother level of stuff. And then even there's an event called Athens to Atlanta, which is in Georgia. And it's 87 miles point to point. So having bigger wheels and having more speed skating experience lets you do those sort of things. Um, so I don't know. Skating fast is fun. You don't need to have fast skates to skate fast. Um, and you don't need to be a speed skater to skate fast. But you might become a speed skater if you start uh, doing some of those things. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get to that level, but I have seen, so I did, my friend and I did the um, NYC uh, skate marathon. We did the half. Oh, nice. So awesome. I think I saw you there. Yeah, uh, I was probably dying trying to skate the 100 <laughs> kilometers, was it, 64 miles? That was, we, we, we had to go fast, otherwise we ain't finishing any time. <laughs> and you guys were passing us, like looping us. <laughs> now we get like little video like oh here they go again <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's great so yeah that's such a such a great event and i love the organizer uh his name's uh, francisco ramirez uh, he's amazing for speed skater he's one of my coaches um and he also runs the mpc and junk uh companies for skating and he's he's a strong skater so like riding with him he ended up placing third so He does such a great job trying to make that event open to everyone. He's always inviting quad skaters, inline skaters, beginners. He's like throwing discounts for like urban skaters. Like he really, you know, for someone who's such a, so much in the speed skating world, he does such a good job making sure it's not only speed skaters who are enjoying such an event like that. Yeah. Uh, We definitely had a good time uh, planning to do it again. And there were people there cheering us. Oh, <laughs> cheering yeah. Us oh, yeah, it's outside. great. Yeah, it's such good energy. Why not, right? <laughs> right? I was like, I was, I was dying. <laughs> but That's okay. That means you I had a good time. Line, as soon as I crossed the line, you see the people like, hey, you can do it. I was like, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, for sure. Hey, you're putting yourself on the line out there, right? Like you, everyone deserves, deserves that cred. Yeah, that was a really cool event. So what, all right. So do you have a favorite style of skating and if so what is it oh man um to me skating i gotta tell you it's just getting into that flow state where you're just like really immersed in it so one of the things i really enjoyed for many years is just commute skating just skating from point a to point Mm -mm. b Mm -hmm. and especially in new york like people think new york's like a really dangerous place because it's so chaotic but the chaos is what actually makes it very safe Mm. because everything's so chaotic say in like the streets of manhattan everyone all the drivers are actually very alert because, like, if they ain't alert, they're going to hit someone else before they can even get a chance to hit you. Yeah. So, and the other thing, the traffic's actually not moving that fast. So, it's kind of like being in a video game, just, like, flying through the streets, whipping around cars and traffic and stuff, and just being in the mix with everything. So, that's something I enjoyed a lot for many years. Um, as of late, I've just been expanding into new disciplines. So, I feel like anytime I get to learn something new, it's more, it's just I'm having a good time with it. Mm-hmm. So. Who knows? I mean, it's like the seasons, right? Like you enjoy summer for what it's worth and you enjoy winter for what it's worth. So each season I'm doing a little different stuff with skating. Nice. That's a good comparison. So speaking of your teachings, um, with you being an instructor, um, what do most of your students come in to learn? Like, do they want to learn a specific, uh, style of skating right so just, you know yeah so it actually it's i've had a lot of variety of stuff uh during the pandemic i i was teaching quite a bit and i ended up with a lot of uh 
beginners or people who just want to build a good foundation. So I worked, you know, it's a lot of like just people just want to figure out skates and make, feel like they can like get around comfortably or move on them comfortably. So that was most of it. Every now and then I get someone who wants to learn like a specific move, like a power slide or a better stopping method or something like that. So I usually incorporate all of that. And then in the past, I did run slalom classes just because it was such a very technical art. Um, so it depends. I'm, I'm sure I'll start running skate park classes in not the distant future um, since that's now becoming much bigger too. So I think you kind of just ride the waves wherever they mm. go. There's so much, so much to learn in skating, which means there's a lot of opportunities to teach different things. All right, cool. Switching gears a little bit, you have a skate shop. Yes. What inspired you to open Kinetic Expression Skate Shop? Oh, yeah. So uh, I had the idea a few years ago. I met the uh, owners of one of the skating brands, and I'd done some work with them before um, under like some uh, sponsor agreement. And that was uh, Seba and FR, so the kind of a uh, sister company. So uh, FR Skates, uh, it's a French company. Uh, they're run by skaters, and they're really great, great uh, people who run it. And they came to New York and wanted someone to carry their skates. They make really good skates. I use their skates uh, for a lot of my skating. And, you know, they, it's hard. It's a hard sell to sell, to like open up a skate business or to expand a business. So mm -hmm. they reached out to me as well. And I was like, oh, I'm, I actually have some property I could like use to sell skates, but I was also too busy traveling. So I said, eh, maybe in another year I'll do it. Uh, flash forward to 2020. Well, I'm not traveling much anymore. And the folks at FR reached out to me again and said like, hey, what happened to the idea of selling skates out of your space? And I said, <laughs> you know what? Skating's booming. Now's the time to do it. So I set up a space. I had to like figure it out. It was during the pandemic. So I was like, okay, I have like a little alley space I have. So I can at least have people outside for them to try on the skates. Um, inventory's always been difficult, just getting enough skates in mm -hmm. any kind of timely manner. But the experience has been good, especially New York doesn't have any inline skate shops. Like you got a few sports stores that carry them as like a side item. Yeah. And probably the best of them is probably Panda Sport. They do a good job, but they're also only, they're not carrying any of the like fancier models. So to get like a quality skate, like from FR skates, um, it, it, it's a big deal, especially in a city like New York to needs to have something. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Um, I actually, I don't know if you remember, uh, I came in 2020 with my mom. <laughs> I think so, yes. <laughs> and we bought some, bought some wheels. Mm -hmm. And it was just cool because it's like, well, I was the only person there. And um, I did get like, um, I did get like a, uh, like the customer experience. Like, yeah, like a very was, personal experience, yeah, right? Yeah. Since I was the only one there. But you had a lot of, from skates to uh to bags to wheels a lot of things there um i didn't get a chance to like search around but yeah, uh, there's even more stuff now I, <laughs> I too many things now <laughs> can't even keep track of it i bet but um i definitely plan to come back and if anyone needs skates definitely um i'll put the information in show notes um but definitely check out kinetic expression skate shop located in queens new york Yep. Um, yeah, but that's dope that you had that. And you're right. There's really no skate shops. And even the big, um, like, sporting goods stores, um, if, if they do have a selection, it's very small. But yeah. some of those don't even have, <laughs> like, I, yeah, it's... Yeah, it was unfortunate. Like Paragon Sports used to carry like a good selection of skates and now they've got like next to nothing. It's, un it's just unfortunate, right? Like for New York to not have a place to get a decent pair of skates. It's a very personal thing to get fitted with skates, to like make sure you got the right ones, exactly. that they feel right. So most people buy skates online and it's it's a very fraught experience. Yeah, I get, uh, speaking of a, like a recent, I just purchased some skates and got them. I was super excited. Put them on. Too small. And I'm like, Oof. oh, I got to send Oof. them back now. Yep. That's how it goes. <laughs> and, and then I sent them back. Then they're like, oh, we don't have them. <laughs> yep. They, they don't got any more. That's it. Stuck waiting. I was like, oh, my gosh. So I'm glad that you have your skate shop. Um, do you have any skating goals for 2022? 
for 2022, uh, well, I started already two months ago, but I've been working a lot on skate park, just getting much more proficient with that. Um, I'm looking at just skate, skate and enjoy it in a lot of different ways. I'm always working to improve my slalom skating, but mm-hmm. um, looking also just train more people, get more people certified to teach. So mm. I think there's a lot of demand for instructors and just not enough instructors. So where we need to expand that out and especially across different disciplines. So those are, those are some of the big ones. As usual, I'll, I'll probably find some new crazy adventure to skate. Maybe I'll go skate across Iowa again, like I did in 2019 and 2021. So we'll see what else is uh, on the table. Um, oh, I am doing, uh, I am planning to do a 24 hour skate in uh, Miami. And that's happening next month. Um, so there's a skateboarding event. They've invited uh, inline and quad skaters to participate as well. So that'll be on our racetrack in Miami. That's going to be exciting. Something new and exciting. Oh, wow. Yeah, definitely keep me posted about that. That sounds so dope. Yeah, you'll see me like all destroyed. Some of them will be a picture of me like destroyed <laughs> after skating for 24 hours straight. <laughs> is, there, is there any advice for potential new skaters? Oh, for people, there's plenty, or, yeah. <laughs> or people uh, thinking about dusting their skates off, like, you know, their old skates off and getting back into the game. Yeah, so I have a few pieces of advice. And the first thing, we'll, we'll start with the equipment. Um, if your skates are really old, just be kind of careful with them because the plastic might deteriorate or the wheels might deteriorate. So make sure, like, nothing's going to, like, just break on you while you're, like, say, in, like, the middle of a street. So check mm. that out. Um, two, if you are looking to get a new pair of skates, definitely definitely don't, like, buy the cheap sporting goods store skates or like the cheap Amazon stuff. Cause what's going to happen is your feet are going to hurt. The skates aren't going to work well. You're going to have a hard time doing anything. You're going to have a miserable time. And instead of thinking that you saved say X number of dollars, you just threw away whatever you spent on the skates cause they're completely useless. So, you know, people, I try and advise them, you know, you want to be spending at least 180, maybe $200 on a pair of skates at minimum. Mm. And I mean, considering it's a lot of the expense of a lot of other hobbies, like skating is pretty cheap compared to most hobbies um, and endeavors. So get a decent pair of skates, start there. And then the other thing is uh, start small. Uh, Skating has a steep learning curve. So just don't get discouraged. It only gets easier. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you could find an instructor, work with an instructor, you could find one through Skate IA. They've got a brand new instructor search um, that's launching in the next few days um, to find instructors. Um, if you find there's lots of video resources online, there's online instructors, uh, skate fresh. Asha is a great online instructor. She's been in the game many, many, many years. Um, so a lot of resources online and I've got a bunch of tutorial videos on the in move skates, YouTube channel. So that's a buddy of mine that asked me to do a bunch of videos and he's, he's got a lot of subscribers that so works out. Um, so lots of resources to learn skating and not to get too discouraged. It's definitely got a learning curve. So as long as someone keeps that in mind and then finds resources to like get them moving, it's going to be really rewarding and a lot of fun. Nice. That's great advice. Um, I had some skates, uh, since I was like 15, I, (laughs) I would just ride those and then after I can't even find them now, but they were given out. And Mm -hmm. it was, you're absolutely right. Like plastic things were falling off. It was making noise. Oh yeah. You could hear me like down the block coming. Yep. (laughs) You could hear, it it was, it was kind of embarrassing, but. Yeah, that's okay. But (laughs) one one other thing uh, to keep in mind is uh, the skating technology has gotten much better. So the skates made today are significantly more comfortable. Mm -hmm. The build is better. They handle better. They're easier to control. It's similar to what happened with the ski industry where like you had to like really like work the skis and have your exact technique right. And like then eventually they got that whatever the parabolic shape of the skis and all of a sudden it was just easy to turn on them and everything. So same's happened in the skating world. Nice. Yeah. Comfortability is key. <laughs> you want to be comfortable. Yeah. Last question. What do you love most about skating? Oh, man. Skating is about freedom and it's about expression. So you get to just experience it in whatever way you want. You got whatever emotions in you, you can let it out in some sort of creative way that not only looks good, but feels good. Um, and it doesn't matter if it looks good or not. Right. But it's definitely going to like feel good. It's going to mm-hmm. be something. And there's just so many ways to enjoy it. You, it's really like you start to get bored of it in one way. You could find another way to have fun on it. Um, and then you can do it alone. You can do it with people. So I just like, you know, skating's versatile in all these ways, whether it's internal to you or external to you or what, what's on your feet. 
Yeah, I agree. You heard it. Freedom and expression. Um, most of the people I've interviewed, whether it's cycling or skating, they say freedom. Yeah. You know, you know it, we're moving, we're traveling, we are seeing different things. We are able to be free. And you're absolutely right. Um, definitely with more so with skating is the um, expression of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you again so much for being a guest on the Thank Roman you. Tate wow. These podcast. are awesome, awesome questions. <laughs> so really, really love talking about this. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Yeah, of course. And I, I would love to have you back and, you know, keep us updated on what's going on in the skate world. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. This is the Rolling with Tay podcast. I'm your host, Tasia, a.k.a. Tay, and thanks for listening. Want more Rolling with Tay podcasts? Well, follow on Instagram and Twitter at Rolling with Tay. Visit the blog rollingwithtay.wordpress.com for more content and be sure to sign up for the monthly newsletter. And lastly, subscribe to the YouTube channel Rolling with Tay.